sea is a dangerous place. No one tool can guarantee your safety. But one can definitely help. Knowledge. This is Anatomy of Disaster. Here to give you that one tool to help keep you alive out there, shipmates. You wake up to the sound of the general emergency alarm and the smell of smoke. As you stumble out of your rack, you're forced to keep low to keep out of the choking haze of smoke. As you make your way out of the birthing area, you quickly put together what's happened. The ship's engines have caught fire. You can feel the heat radiating through the bulkhead. There are very few options. Fight the fire or face the sea. In the days of sail, great efforts were made in the field of fire prevention. The risk of a fire was less, but the repercussions were immense. Sailing ships being made entirely of wood, covered in hemp lines, propelled by cotton canvas sails, and often loaded with gunpowder. Fires could often burn out of control until a ship burned down to the waterline. Before the invention of water pumps, a crew often had to fight fires with bucket brigades. Today the methods of shipboard firefighting are much more numerous and advanced, but the sources of fire have increased tenfold. Internal combustion engines, hydraulic steering pumps, laundry machines, paint, aviation fuel, etc. All of these ramp up the risks and likelihood of a shipboard fire. Fires, even on a metal vessel, can quickly spread and engulf an entire ship, forcing a crew to have to evacuate an abandoned ship, which could lead to any number of other hazards. The dangers of fire should be plainly obvious. Smoke can fill spaces very quickly, suffocating anyone that isn't utilizing an oxygen supply. Heat from fires can cause heat-related injuries, like heat exhaustion or heat stroke. Flames can cause severe burns or even death. And flames can spread to explosive materials like ammunition magazines or fuel tanks. Subsequent explosions can create flying shrapnel or even obliterate a ship entirely. The necessity to put a fire out quickly, then ventilate the ship, is extremely high. So what is fire? Fire is the uninhibited chemical chain reaction in which heat energy is released during combustion. Fire is composed of four parts, something some call the fire tetrahedron. The parts are heat, fuel, oxygen, and the uninhibited chain reaction. Fire can only exist with those four parts. Remove one and you no longer have fire. Broken down to its bare bones, firefighting is simply the science of removing one of those four parts. Fire can be classified into four classes, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, and Delta. Alpha fires are some of the most common fires and are from ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, cloth, or trash, etc. It's often identified by a light gray or white smoke coming off it. Class Alpha fires are easily fought using most standard firefighting agents, water, CO2, dry chemical, etc. Bravo fires are liquid fires, typically started from gasoline, paints, alcohol, solvents, etc. They can be identified by thick black smoke. They're a bit more difficult to put down. Water can often worsen the situation by spreading it. It's best to smother these fires using dry chemical, CO2, or firefighting foam. Class Charlie fires are electrical fires. These are fires started from an energized electrical component. These can often be identified by a sort of bluish smoke. Typically, these can be extinguished by simply cutting power to the component on fire. But if this isn't possible, you can also use CO2 or dry chemical. But you should avoid using water at all cost for obvious reasons. Once power is cut to a Charlie fire, oftentimes an Alpha fire may remain and must be put out. Last is Class Delta fires. These are metal fires, certain metals being flammable like magnesium, thermite, or titanium. It is highly dangerous as it burns at extremely high temperatures. There are also very few ways to battle a Class Delta fire. Water can often simply worsen a Delta fire. The fire needs to be smothered, either by large amounts of dry powder, or if possible, jettisoning it into the sea. So what should your initial response be if you discover a fire on your vessel? Well first, remain calm. If caught quickly, a fire can be easily contained or extinguished. If small enough, attempt to put it out. Locate a fire extinguisher or secure power to a device that's on fire. If that is impossible, try to isolate the fire or slow its advance. Some spaces have installed firefighting systems. 
such as bilge dumps to fill a bilge with firefighting foam, or installed CO2 dumps to rapidly cool and starve an area of oxygen. But it's vital to ensure those spaces are clear of personnel before lighting those systems off. Then quickly sound the alarm and alert the ship and the crew to the location and get ready to mount a firefighting effort. Finally, firefighting efforts will begin in earnest. Depending on your ship, the overall responsibility of damage control will fall on the captain or master, though there may be a dedicated damage control leader to assist the captain. How your ship is set up to combat fire casualties is largely dependent on the vessel itself, though most modern ships have a series of repair lockers to muster at and stand up a fire team. Dependent on crew size, a fire team may be as small as two to three or as large as several dozen. Positions like investigators who locate damage and report to the repair locker leaders, all the way to boundrymen who man bulkheads, clear them of flammable material, and cool them to keep the fire from spreading. There are several ancillary roles if you have the crew for it. As far as the meat and potatoes for how the fire itself is fought, there are numerous variables such as where the fire is, what is burning, what equipment is being used to engage it, and so on. Far too many to honestly be covered in such a short video. This is sort of just to cover the basics for an OS or a freshly reported seaman to give them a rough baseline. If there's call for it, I may expand further on the subject. But for now, let me impart how imperative it is that you seek further education on your own. Attend classes or ask your command to send you to a firefighting sea school. Not only does it help your survivability, but also your marketability. Those classes look great on a resume. Once a fire has been extinguished in the method prescribed by your repair locker leader or damage control officer, oftentimes a reflash watch will be posted, whose job it is to ensure the fire does not reflash or reignite. Efforts will then be made to ventilate the ship of lingering smoke or possibly persisting flammable vapors. Also, if large quantities of firefighting water were used in a space, they'll be pumped out seeing as adding large amounts of water to any ship can sometimes cause problems. Then the cleanup and repair can begin. Fires on a ship are a monumental risk. Entire vessels can be lost to fires, such as was the case with the motor vessel Donya Paz. Or even in just a fire that gets out of control, but doesn't engulf the ship, can lead to numerous deaths, like in the instance of the USS Forrestal. Knowing how to identify and stop a fire early is imperative but also learning how to fight a fire and a fire team is very useful as well. Also, seek out further education and never stop learning. Add more tools to your arsenal and increase your chances of coming home safely. Fair winds and following seas to you shipmates.